Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for coming back. I'm sorry for being sick for the past week and a half with that mm, mild flu that's going around. Yeah, that thing's, a, that thing's a hitter, that's for sure. Both my boys had it. Um, off school for a week, off work for a week. Myself, um, finally the cough is almost gone. Yeah, it was bad. I managed to cast though. Um, not too hard to sit there and play music for a, on a Friday night. And of course, the beer always helps when you're sick. Alcohol kills everything. That's my, that's my uh, theory, anyways. So welcome back. Before we get started on brewing our next project, um, last time we were here, we did the, uh, that simple beer kit. Um, I have a barley wine from Norway. This is a home brew, brewed by Paul from Norway. Uh, Kjen Nano Brewery. This beer is strong. 10% alcohol at least. Uh, what's it called? Let's get a thing here. It's called American Barley Wine, A-B-W. It's pretty basic. Got myself a glass. All the way from Norway. All the, all the way, here we go. All the way from Norway. Oh, is this thing on? Okay, there we go. Um, we're going to give this a whirl and we're going to brew up a, a quick wine for you guys. Um, a little different than it was. The last one was a, a just to pour it in and add the yeast. This one's a little bit more involved um, than that, but not much. So, um, yeah, that flu is not a uh, fun thing to get over. Okay, but I lived. I heard people are actually, you know, getting pretty sick and some people were actually dying from pneumonia from this thing. So I was kind of scared. Um, but I'm healthy enough and I don't smoke, so I'm, I'm okay. Right. 10% alcohol. God knows how, what shape I'm going to be in at the end of this video. Smells like a typical barley wine spiciness in there. Mmm, some nice, kind of a barley wine kind of aroma. I don't know. What the heck? I'm not a beer reviewer. Let's give it a whirl. Cheers. I don't mind the machines over there. I do laundry. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Very, very typical of a good barley wine. Definitely a lot of spices in there. Don't know what he did. I don't know anything about this beer at all. I don't know the recipe. At 10% alcohol, you can't really taste the alcohol too much. It's definitely got that sort of allspice or that um, spiciness to it, almost like a pumpkin-y sort of thing. Um, not very sweet, but pleasantly malty. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to come up with all these professional beer review terms. <sighs> just not a beer reviewer. I, I love beer though. I'm a beer drinker. Mmm. Oh, oh, yeah, babe. That's good. That's awesome, Paul. From Norway. Thank you, sir. That's delicious. Um, if you've never drank barley wine before, and so, you know, sometimes you can get that really cheap, um, well, what do they call that? Malt liquor. This is, and it's pretty strong stuff. Um, no, this is way better than that. This actually has some flavor. Um, I don't want to start any feuds or anything like that um, on YouTube with those guys because I don't even know if they're still around, but label out. It's so delicious. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. He said just to enjoy that, so I will. What have we got? A sanitized fermenter. That's a good start. Got to get myself a little stirrer, stirrer thing. Put that in the sanitizer over there. Forgot to do that earlier. Get that going. And here, this wine kit was sent. Sent in, I, again, I apologize for all the noise. Um, this is a, uh, what is this? This was sent in a while ago. Malbec style red wine. 
Fantona Premium. You see that? So basically, let's get into this and see what we've got. Most of these uh, wine kits are pretty much the same procedure. So I don't really, I think I read the instructions over at some point and I got them. So basically you do the same thing, get over there. Basically you do the same thing with them all. We've got some yeast here. It's a Lalvin uh, EC1118, pretty typical of a... Next thing you know, my washing machine is going to go on the blink. Pretty typical of a, uh, of a wine kit to have that sort of yeast in there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't... It's on the spin cycle. Okay. And uh, let's get into this and see what we've got. Probably the typical array of stuff. It's our clearing, our clearing kit, as I call it, for later. And we'll film all this in the following weeks, little bits and pieces here and there. Show you guys what we actually do. We have a, this is A, B, and C. So A, I'm gonna guess, I'm not, I haven't read them. A is going to be uh, bentonite. B is going to be mm, sodium, potassium metamisulfite. C is going to be potassium sorbate. Let's see if I'm showing off. Let's see if I'm right. Bentonite. Yes, that's what that is. This one is potassium metamisulfite. Yep. And potassium sorbate. So um, basically when you do wine, this is like a clay. It's a powdered clay. And it, it kind of attaches itself to the molecules or the solids in the wine, helps bring them down to the bottom. So it's a, it's a, it helps as a clearing agent. So that goes in first. We'll put that in in a minute. The, the potassium metamisulfite kills all the yeast, if there is any left, and, and stops the wine from fermenting and kind of kills everything and deadens it. And then the potassium sorbate prevents future fermentation when you're aging the wine in the bottles. Okay, so, and then of course these things here, you add one first, you stir it and you add the other, the instructions will tell you. Um, these help to finally clear the wine so that it's like crystal clear, right? So, first thing you do when you make one of these darn wine kits is you take some sort of enjoyable alcohol beverage internally to prepare yourself for the following procedure. Uh, let's see, this is a, fer a fermenter that's been sanitized. We'll just put that over like that and get that so it doesn't touch anything. And we're going to fill this with, uh, this is dead easy guys, I'm, I'm just doing this because I don't have all that much else to talk about on this particular video. Warm water or hot water into a sanitized Fermenter, you put, you know, a little bit in there, not much. Doesn't have to be a big, big measurement conundrum. And then we grab some uh, bentonite. And we sort of sprinkle that in. I know you can't see but it's just water and gray powder. And we grab our stir thingy and we mix that in really good. It says to do it for about a couple of minutes because it can kind of clump up if you're not careful. This is, you're, you're making wine and this, this is good wine. Um, you know, I've been making wine for five, some year, I don't know, six, seven years, maybe more. And I've done several different uh, wine kits. Um, and I, you know, I've bought wine from the store and I don't, I'm not gonna pay $500 for a bottle of wine or a hundred or 50 or whatever for a bottle of wine. I'm not a big wine connoisseur. Um, although I've been accused of being a bit of a sewer. They took the conna away from me a while ago and I'm just a sewer. Um, not big, I'm not a big wine expert. So 
Um, a decent bottle of wine for me, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. This stuff, this, these kits make as good as, if not better wine than that. Safe to say it's as good as the store-bought stuff. Um, unless you're a big wine connoisseur, then you might notice a difference. We don't want that coming on right now. There we go. Okay. Well, I'm going to need these again later anyway. Scissors. These are from, these are kindergarten scissors or something. One of my kids, when, when they were young. Okay, now, what I usually do with these things is I kind of try to um, rid them of any extra debris. Like this. Although this one's pretty light, probably wouldn't be very difficult to just lift it out of there. But this is what, you, what I normally do. Bring that out. And you can use a screwdriver. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. Or you can get yourself one of these. Where's mine? Handy dandy. Wine kit opening devices. Whatever they call them. There we go. Oh yeah, babe. There we go. Good stuff. Smells awesome. And we're just going to carefully pour that. I've done this live before on YouTube. Pour that into the fermenter. There we are. Oh, it's quiet in here all of a sudden. Probably not for long. So this is a concentrated um, grape juice. All right, and then what I always do, and oh, there's something else down in the bottom of that. What do we got in here? Oh, labels. Hey, there you go. Keep them aside, because I think I will bottle this wine. I say that because sometimes I don't bottle the wine. Sometimes I just um, drink it out of the carboy with a thief. Um, it depends on how long I'm going to keep the wine around for this. I'd like to keep this one around for a while and drink it out of bottles. So, get some warm water. If I can find the end of that hose there. Whoop. Oh, there we go. And just rinse the bag out. You know, I mean, you can do this in your sleep, basically. I know, I know of course, and, and I should pause and tell you that um, a lot of people make wine with fresh fruits, fresh grapes, and they grow them or they get them from somewhere and they crush them and they do all that. And that's perfectly awesome. I've tasted uh, wine like that, uh, and it is really, really good. Um, if you have the means to get yourself some fresh grapes or you have a vineyard in your backyard or, or whatever. I have a friend who has done this, made their own wine and uh, out of fresh uh, grapes and I've tasted it and it was awesome. So, you know, I mean, if you have the means to do that, then by all means, right? But I don't. And this is a lot cheaper than uh, buying bottles of wine, especially since this was free because it was sent in by a kind viewer. And it's dead easy. There we go. So let's give that a stir. So now what we've got, and I'll let me see if we can get, I don't want to spill anything here, but can we get this? Can you guys see that? I don't think, well, yeah, you sort of can. It's basically a concentrated wine juice. I'm going to give this a really good stir to make sure that bentonite gets uh, incorporated in there. It's pretty important. There we go. Okay. Now what? Um, 
well, now you just add water. <laughs> this is so, you know, ridiculously easy. I hope I'm an entertaining enough person because this is not the most entertaining thing in the world, watching somebody add water to a... Okay, so now we're going to add some cold water. This is pretty, pretty simple stuff, guys. I mean, if you want to make wine, there's nothing to it at all. When you do it this way, I mean, like I said before, if you want to go the other route with the fresh fruit, well, that's completely up to you. We're going to do 23 liters. I think that's what they want. Although, sometimes I go a little less. Um, they say not to, but... Um, sometimes these wine kits can be a little bit sparse when it comes to concentration. So we're going to go 21 liters instead of 23, just because. Give that a good old stir. There you go guys and all you have to do now I can't believe that you made it this far in this video without actually falling asleep grab our yeast if we can find it there it is and they always say to sprinkle it on top and don't stir and of course intermission time mmm Got to be careful with this stuff. It's very, very good. And hard to know that that's a strong drink. 10% alcohol. It's a good beer, Paul. Thank you, sir. Norway. They've got some good water over there in Norway. Apparently. Apparently. Sprinkle that on. Never hear anything about rehydrating yeast when it comes to wine. There we go. Perfect. Mm, now what? Um, well, you snap on the lid. Whoops. Sorry about that. That is a contraption. This is what I used to use to um, uh, to put uh, put on the edge of this edges of the fermenter when I had smaller fermenters. And then I would put my colander or my funnel. Let's say I had a funnel like this. This really small funnel that I have. Like that. And then you stick that on the fermenter and then you can easily pour things through it. But this is no longer useful to me. Because my fermenters are, are bigger than that now. Got rid of the smaller ones. So I just got rid of a piece of debris. Okay. There. a little bit of water you can well you can use sanitizer as well I mean I never fuss about this too much sanitizer some people put vodka in there I think that's a waste myself but there you go Bob's your uncle okay you've you've made wine there you go that's gonna ferment for approximately a week at which time I will transfer it into a carboy, which I'm soaking that one in some uh, OxyClean right now. Clean it out. And then it will ferment for another 10 days or so. And then you, I guess, depending on the instructions, because some of them say yes and some of them say no, don't uh, transfer it to a third vessel. And then you start adding your, you know, your finalizing things in a certain particular order. And it's so easy that if you pay a lot of a high price for wine where you live and you like wine um this certainly uh, get yourself a fermenter and um and and make your own it's so easy i mean you just saw me do that that's going to ferment out quite nicely um actually i'm looking at my can you see that that says 20 liters i think i'm going to I guess we were stirring it and it was, you know, going up the edge a little bit. No, we're not going to do that. 
I'm going to leave it at 20 liters because I've already put the yeast in and I don't want to disturb the yeast. So, something I've never done before, put a little less water into a wine kit than normal. But, you know, sometimes these kits, they turn out, you know, 11, 10, 11 percent alcohol. So this way, it'll turn out a little bit stronger than that and we'll see what happens. So, I want to thank the person who sent this wine kit to me. Thought awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that's not, it says white wine there. It actually is red wine. It's depending on, it's, just, it's a box that's used for both, I guess. And uh, there you have it. I may put a heat belt on that, depending on the temperature down here. It's still very cold outside. And of course, this is a basement. So um, I might actually slap a heat belt on that and keep it up around 74 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what they usually recommend for that particular yeast. Okay. So there. We did it! Um, what have I got going on back here? Well, I was sick for a week and a half, so um, basically last night I quickly brewed up a couple of Coopers. Um, got a, um, a darker one going here. What was that one? Let's see, where's the thing for that? That was an amber ale or something like that. And this one here is a, uh, is a lager. Uh, it's a European lager, but I didn't use the yeast that came with the kit because I've done a couple of these European lagers and they sometimes get this um, sulfur odor to them um, and it takes oh several months months for that to go away because I don't bottle my beer I do keg it I only have two kegs I don't want to wait that long so I used a simple uh, US 05 yeast with this. It's not going to turn out to be a lager, but it'll be a nice beer. Okay, so um, And of course I'm going to harvest that yeast and, and use it over and over again because it was five dollars for a package of Yeast so for five dollars I better get at least a year out of this anyways as long as I don't mess up and forget about it because that's what I did last time I forgot and sat in there overnight and I lost it. So that's that. Anyways, as far as um, everything else goes, I'm doing great. Um, I'm, I apologize for the, you know, for the, you know, the, the delay here, but uh, that flu raced through this house like a, like a bomb and it's not a nice one. Um, the next step after this, um, as I've mentioned several times, I have other kits and things I'm going to be doing. Um, these are the simple ones. Uh, I've got some grains and some hops and some malt extracts and whatnot that have been sent in that we're going to be doing some recipes with. So that will be the next step. I think I have a, um, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but a pumpkin ale that was sent in. Uh, we're a little late for that. Halloween is uh, kind of past, um, but it doesn't matter to me. I still enjoy it just the same. So. We'll do that next, or one of those next. Anyway, we've got several different boxes of stuff here that we're going to get into. So, um, and I also still have some Cascade hops, which I purchased some leaf hops, fresh ones, that I like to add to these kits when I get a chance. You know, just dry hop with them or put them in a boil. Shirts, tgtshirts.com. Uh, my live broadcast, vonlive.tv slash craigtube. I've got a series coming up on my vinyl channel about cassettes. Um, a very, very favorite uh, music storage format of mine, cassettes. And it'll be a, a multi-part series on there. So if you're interested in cassettes and how they work, how they work and why they sound as good as they do, um, and the technology that went into making them a very, very breakthrough technology as far as sound quality, Go to Vinyl TV on YouTube and subscribe, please. Um, I'd love to see you there and see your take on cassettes and vinyl as well. And I will shoot out of here and let you guys get back to your other activities. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your patience. Um, I couldn't do this without you. I sympathize with every, anyone who's got that flu that I had and um, <laughs> oh, 
Hopefully you get over it as easily as I did. Have a couple of beers and drink lots of water if you do have it. And cheers. Thank you so much. See you guys very soon on this channel and on my vinyl channel. Take care, be safe, and most of all, keep brewing that good beer. No matter how you brew it, you just got to do it. Cheers. 17.